Good morning and welcome to worship of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, where he bids us come and rest your weary souls. Come and heed the invitation of Jesus so that he may heal, so that he may give strength to the battlefield of your own heart. And we learn more about that in the sermon and the surrounding readings for today. Uh, our worship is the service of word and sacrament as printed in the worship folder. And we begin with our first hymn, 637, The Law of God is Good and Wise. As you are comfortable and as you are able, please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord 
for the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Jesus, we for refuge flee. Who from the curse has set us free and humbly worship at your throne, saved by his grace through faith alone. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome change of the world, and at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. Where can the Christian go for comfort to God himself, to Jesus himself, as is his humble invitation? After the incident with the golden calf, Moses has had a chance to think about what he might say to the Lord in order that he be assured his presence will go with his people. He even boldly asks that he see the Lord in all of his glory. Exodus chapter 33. Moses said to the Lord, look, you yourself have been telling me, lead this people up but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. So now if I have found favor in your sight, please show me your ways so that I may know you, so that I may find favor in your sight. Consider that this nation is your people. The Lord said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Moses said to him, if your presence is not going to go with me, do not send us up from here. After all, how would people know that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Isn't it, that, isn't it in this way that you go up with us so that we are distinguished, I and your people, from all the people who are on the face of the earth? The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have said, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Please, show me your glory. The Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass in front of you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord in your presence. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. He said, You cannot see my face. For no human may see my face, see me, and live. The Lord also said, Look, there is a place next to me where you shall stand on the rock. It will happen that while my glory passes by, I will put you in a crevice in the rock. I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you will see my back. But my face will not be seen. The word of our Lord. 
The appointed psalm this day is expressed in the words of our next hymn, 818, My Soul Finds Rest in God Alone, and we sing the words as printed.
We continue now in God's word with our second lesson from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 7. This will also be our sermon text for today. The rest of Jesus is promised those who are in weary battle, weary battle the new man versus the sinful flesh. For I do not understand what I am doing, because I do not keep doing what I want. Instead, I do what I hate. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. But now it is no longer I who am doing it, but it is sin living in me. Indeed, I know that good does not live in me, that is, in my sinful flesh. The desire to do good is present with me, but I am not able to carry it out. So I fail to do the good I want to do. Instead, the evil I do not want to do, that is what I keep doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who am doing it, but it is sin living in me. So I find this law, this principle at work. When I want to do good, evil is present with me. I certainly delight in God's law according to my inner self, but I see a different law at work in my members, waging war against the law of my mind and taking me captive to the law of sin, which is present in my members. What a miserable wretch I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is God's word. Will the congregation please stand? Alleluia, Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia. gospel recorded this day is from the gospel of Luke chapter 11. Jesus is true rest. At that time, Jesus continued, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from clever and learned people and have revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, because this was pleasing to you. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wants to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our next hymn, Come Unto Me, Ye Weary, 706.
Grace and peace and rest to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. By the power of his Holy Spirit, amen. The lesson for our consideration, once again, is the second lesson from Romans chapter 7. Dear friends, did you feel fully rested when you woke up this morning? Or were you tossing and turning up at weird hours of the night? Unless you are a child who has boundless energy, you should know that physical rest is important. Rest improves things like memory and creativity. Rest restores energy, I'm sure we all know that, and boosts your immune system. Rest decreases pain levels in your body, helps manage your weight, and makes you happier overall. You need physical rest. You also need the rest which scripture talks to us about today. You need spiritual rest. And no words make that more apparent than the words of the Apostle Paul. There's something going on at the spiritual level that Paul cannot stand. It wears him out and frustrates him to his very core. He says, for I do not understand what I am doing, because I do not keep doing what I want. Instead, I do what I hate. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. Now, every Christian looks at God's commands and says, yes, this is what I want to do. This is the guide that I want to follow. And yet, despite our good intentions as Christians, we most often end up doing the exact opposite of what we intended. Now, where is the problem? Is the problem with God's holy will as we find it in Scripture? No, we even just sang it this morning. The law of God is good and wise, guiding us in the proper way to use the many gifts he has given to us. Is the problem you or me or Paul? No, because as Christians... We agree with everything God says is good. We like, we desire everything that God says is good. However, when you take inventory of how you have followed God's guidance day to day, hour to hour, what do you see? Too many mistakes. Stains and rust spots, too many to count. Your Christian sanctification is lacking. How can we be so vile? How can we be so two-faced when we want to carry out what is good? Paul goes on and he says, but now it is no longer I who am doing it, that is the evil, but it is sin living in me. Instead, I know that good does not live in me, that is, in my sinful flesh. The desire to do good is present with me, but I am not able to carry it out. So I fail to do the good I want to do. Instead, the evil I do not want to do, that is what I keep doing. Now, if I do, not do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who am doing it, but it is sin living in me. Paul identifies the problem as the sinful flesh, the sin that was passed down to you and me through our parents, all the way back to our first parents, Adam and Eve, when they fell into sin in the Garden of Eden. So does this mean that you and I have an excuse 
Can we just say something like, well, God can't be too hard on me because, after all, I am trying my best. My sinful nature made me do it like we sometimes say, the devil made me do it. No, God does not have time for such excuses. The responsibility of each daily sin that we commit still lies with us. God's law still holds us accountable, still is that mirror that shows us our sin against his holy will. So then the question becomes, what's the benefit? What's the benefit for knowing that we have a sinful nature that resides within us? Fellow Christians, know your enemy. Know what you are up against. Know the power that resides in that sinful nature. When Paul says, I know that good does not live in my sinful flesh, he means it. The sinful flesh makes serving God in this life difficult. God says, you shall not steal. And the sinful nature says, well, nobody's watching, nobody's looking, nobody's caring. If God says, and he does, you shall not commit adultery, the sinful nature says, well, what's the harm in a little peek online? Is your first reaction to take someone's words and actions towards you in the kindest possible way? Or are you quick to anger? because they messed up, they made things worse, or you just plain don't like them. How quick we are. How quick we are, we must admit, to do what we think is right as as opposed to what God says is right. The mindset of the sinful flesh is hostile to God. That's its only attitude since it does not submit to God's law, and in fact, it cannot. Those who are in the sinful flesh cannot please God. Every day, every day we are tempted and coerced to do what we know is wrong. Every day is a knockdown, drag-out war. And your sinful nature, your sinful flesh, wants to win that war. It wants to win out against the new man that was implanted in you at baptism, the new self that does indeed say when it comes to the ways and will of God, this is good and this is right. Every day, the goal of the sinful nature is to take your will captive. It wants to make you despair as you realize the principle at work in yourself that the Apostle Paul identifies when he says, I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is present with me. The new man, the new self, created in baptism, desires to do something that is good. And the sinful flesh works just as hard to dirty it and destroy it. My new self delights in the things of God, but my fleshly body desires to carry out the works of sin, the law of sin. I want to be that redeemed child that God has called me to be, in every way. Yet from the look of things, every day I am more the miscreant and evildoer I do not want to be. The minute I think I have the upper hand, my sinful nature proves itself to be alive and well. And we throw up our hands. We throw up our hands like the Apostle Paul not knowing where to turn, not knowing how to handle the situation, not knowing how to fight the war that is constantly going on inside each of us. 
and we confess what a miserable wretch I am who will rescue me from this body of death. However, the minute we feel we are at the end of our spiritual rope, Paul gives blessed comfort. He simply says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Such a simple sentence of gospel comfort that means infinitely more. Such a simple sentence that offers the rest you need because of the war-torn battlefield of your own heart. Such a simple sentence that says to you, dear Christian, do not despair. Though the days are long, give thanks for Jesus, who is the rest that you need. Because you have rest in Jesus Christ, you are comforted that God knows your situation. God knows the battle that resides within you. God knows that you struggle to do what is right out of love for him. So when Satan comes and whispers in, you, in your ear, you must not be a true Christian. Otherwise, you wouldn't sin like this. When Satan says something like that, you know. You know, it's your, you know that it's not your attempt at good deeds and good behavior that is the basis of your relationship with God. Jesus and his work are the foundation of that relation, relationship. And that relationship cannot, cannot be shaken. Because you have the rest in Jesus Christ, you know that each selfish act of your sinful flesh is forgiven by the Savior's blood. There was the great exchange carried out on the cross. Jesus took upon himself all of your sin so that you might gain for yourself forever his perfect righteousness. Jesus went out and defeated the power of of sin and death and Satan for you. And now God looks at you, not with righteous indignation because you have so sinned against his holy law, but with love unending because you are his dear child by faith and he has shown mercy on you through Jesus Christ. Because you have the rest in Christ, you have been given strength for each day, strength to fight the good fight of faith. How many times over the past three weeks have we not heard about the good fight of faith? This strength, however, is not your own, for you cannot face the temptations of this world and of your sinful flesh on your own. But this strength comes from Jesus alone who takes up the yoke of your burdens and shoulders them with you so that you are not swallowed up by fear and anxiety. This strength comes to you each day as you meditate on God's word, as you see in God's word all that Jesus Christ has done for you. And in so seeing everything that Jesus has done for you, you are then motivated with the strength of God to carry out the good things that you want to do to please him with a thankful heart. As you partake in the gift of his holy supper, you are assured that God's promises are true and that they cannot be taken away from you. Because you have the rest in Jesus Christ, you know that one day, blessedly, one day, your body of sinful flesh will be transformed in the twinkling of an eye. You will be like your Savior, clothed in glory. You will be totally free from sin and its curse. Your ultimate rest will be a heavenly one where you will be with the saints triumphant and all the hosts of heaven never to be tainted by sin and its darkness ever again. 
Dear friends, you need this rest. You need Jesus. He is the only way to survive the daily battle with the sin that lives in you. He is the only one who can take away all the guilt you feel when you fall prey to temptation. He is the only one who can soothe your weariness and shoulder all your burdens. He is the one and certain hope that has already fought sin and all its desires for you and triumphed forever. Always, always heed his gracious invitation. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith today with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation may be seated as our offering is received. Please stand for prayer. We will praise you, our God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. You are faithful in all your words and gracious in all your deeds. You uphold all who are falling and raise up all who are bowed down. All eyes look to you for food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, we praise you, especially for your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent as your messenger of peace. We thank you that he fulfilled the words of the prophet by riding into Jerusalem amid shouts of recognition that he was the Christ for the assurance that Jesus fulfilled all prophetic utterances of scripture regarding himself, we give you thanks. We confess, O Lord, that although your word tells us that you sent Christ to bring peace to the nations, we have often permitted the conflicts between nations to cause us to doubt your word. For our short-sightedness, forgive us, O Lord. You have not failed us, but we have failed you. For failing to be zealous in the proclamation of your gospel, forgive us. We are weary of fighting the war of sin within ourselves, and we are disturbed by the violence and hatred we observe around us. Forgive our inclinations toward giving up the fight. We have given in to our own wills to do what we want rather than doing what you want. For all this, forgive us, O Lord. In our weariness of the flesh, grant us your Holy Spirit to enable us to accept the invitation of your Son to come to him. May we find in him rest for our souls always. And we also pray the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now prepare to receive the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Oh, Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Oh, Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace, amen. 
congregation may be seated as we first will commune those who wish to remain in their pews for this morning. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink, this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus, this gift which he has given us especially for you, strengthen and keep you in the one true faith until everlasting life. Depart in peace and be assured your sins are forgiven. Amen.
The supper is ended. We stand and we sing, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Congregation may be seated as we sing our final hymn, 770, the selected two verses. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house on this Sunday morning after all the rain. Special welcome to those who are worshiping with us online as well. We thank you for joining us at our Savior's feet and receiving his rest. May you profit by it. May we all profit by it in this next week of his grace and then come back for more rest. As uh, for announcements today, we have our voters assembly uh, occurring right after our dismissal here this morning. Uh, a word about those of you who are going to the baseball game on Saturday. Our plan was to have the tickets ready for you and to give them to you. Our secretary is a little under the weather this morning, so that didn't quite happen the way we, we had hoped. But rest assured, we will get you the tickets by game night this Saturday 
uh, the 15th. We'll either deliver them to you in person or we'll arrange a time with you uh, to pick them up or maybe you'll just feel like dropping on by. That works too. Uh, so just keep that in mind for those 20 that signed up for the game. And then the newest announcement, Vacation Bible School, you can read about it uh, in the bulletin. The flyers and registration forms are on the cart, and the sign-up for volunteers is on the wall. Uh, publicity is word of mouth, so whomever you tell is certainly welcome. All of our children here are welcome to attend as well. Keep that in mind, and uh, hopefully we will be blessed with a good group of children. I know that there are not just parents here uh, who may be wanting this Vacation Bible School, but certainly parents throughout uh, Bay City from other Wells churches, uh, as we are the only church to offer a VBS this year. So may the Lord bless it as he desires. You are rested, well rested spiritually. Continue in that rest day to day. Make sure that you read the precious gospel that the Savior wants to give to you. And then, as I said, come back for more rest next week. You need it. Have a good week.